quick, short, and sweet lesson today, and it's going to be about ad event listener. We're not going to be building anything huge here, but there's a couple of concepts that I need to make sure that we all get down pat because we've you've been using these ad event listeners throughout all these videos, but there's going to be edge cases that you run into where these things are going to be helpful. So what I've got here is I've got three divs. I've got a div with a class of one, two, and three, and they're all nested inside of each other. And what I want to do is explain to you a couple things about uh, propagation, bubbling, event capturing, as well as using this new property called once. So go into your script tag here, and I want to just listen for a click on all of these divs. So we're going to select all those divs, and we're going to make a function called log text. It takes in the event, and we're just going to console log this dot class list dot value. And when somebody clicks a div, we're going to log it. So we'll say take all the divs, loop over each one. We're going to take the div and we're going to add the event listener of click. And when that happens, we're going to call log text. And this is the one you may see me like auto completing this. And we have this capture Boolean right here. That's really what we're going to be looking at here today. But we'll leave that uh, there for now. So give it a save. Now I'm going to click on and obviously this purple one is is div with a class of one. Uh, the misty rose one is two and the coral one is three. So when I click on the coral one, what is going to log? Don't cheat. Just tell yourself what will console.log. Click it. Three, two, and one. Wait, I just clicked on the third one, which is the, the very most inner one, but I also console log two and one. That's weird. Well, also, if we console log this, You'll see the actual elements themselves, three, two, and one. So what's going on here? Well, what is happening is if we go to our elements panel here and we go to the div that we clicked on, we clicked on three, but we really also clicked on two because it wraps around it. We also clicked on one. We also clicked on the body. We also clicked on the HTML tag. And we also clicked on the current tab. And we also clicked on Google Chrome and we also clicked on our OSX operating system and we also clicked on the world and it just keeps zooming out and out and out. So that's the concept of something called bubbling where the browser will figure out what you clicked on, but it will also trigger clicks up every and they'll sort of ripple all the way up. So case in point, if I take a document dot body and I add the event listener of click, and when that happens, I'm going to log text and we have to give our body a class here. So class equals bod. Now watch, I'm going to click on the curl one, three, two, one and bod. So what's happening is that when you make a click, it will ripple all the way up to the top of the document and trigger clicks on those elements as well. Now you don't always see them because you're not necessarily listening for a click on those elements. But if you're listening for a click on multiple nested elements, in this case, we're listening for a click on three, two, one, and bod, then it's going to trigger a click on all of those right there. So I want to explain to you how this actually works in JavaScript. The way that it works in modern browsers is that the browser will first do something called a capture, which means that when you click on the element, it's going to ripple down, it's going to say, OK, you clicked on the body, you clicked on one, you clicked on two and you clicked on three. So it actually goes from the top down and then it captures all of those events and then it starts at the bottom and then starts doing something called a bubble. So the capture goes from top down and then the events, the events haven't fired yet. It just captures where you clicked and is storing them and then it will start to bubble up which means that it's triggering the events as you go up. So it says, OK, we, we've done figuring out what you've clicked on all the way down. Now I'm going to start firing off those click events on three, then two, then one, then body and anything else you're listening for. So if we go to our add event listener here and let's get rid of this document dot body here after our function and pass a third argument, which is an options object. And we say capture is going to be equal to true. What that will then do is when I click, we go one, two, three. And what's happening is that this function log text is not going to get run on the bubble up. It's going to get run on the capture down. So we go to the elements here. It's going to say, oh, they clicked on one. 
fire it. I clicked on two, fire it, and clicked on three, fire it. So that is what capture means, is that you will run the function on the way down rather than on the way up. Now, let me put that back to false. By default, it is false. So that's the normal version that we have here. Another thing we have is called stop propagation. So we just talked about events bubble up, meaning that if you click on the innermost one, it will also trigger an event on the parent and that parent as well. However, what you could then do is you take your event in your function and you call e.stop propagation. And what that will do is it will say, stop bubbling this event up. I clicked the one that I actually wanted. So now if I go in here and click on the middle one, I just see three and two and then one. Why is that? Because we run, what happens is the browser starts at the very lowest one. It runs that function. And then we say stop propagation, which essentially means stop bubbling. And it will, it will no longer trigger events on the parents on the way on up. So let's stop propagation. You can wrap that in an if statement if you like needed to get the middle one or something like that. Uh, but that's what stop propagation does. You can also use that in conjunction with your on your way down. Right here, if I were to click on the, the, the middle one, or sorry, if I were to click on three, what are we going to get with capture true and stop propagation? Just one. Why? Because capture makes it go on the way down one. And then we run stop propagation, which stops it from going down even further. Last thing I wanted to show you was something called once, and this is very new in the browser we have here. So I'm just going to console log that propagation out and bring this capture back to false just so we can get our defaults going back here. Three, two, one. We also have an option called once. And if you set that to true, what will happen is it will listen for a click and then unbind itself. And unbinding itself is the same thing as saying div.remove event listener click log text. So it will listen for a click once and then unbind itself so that there's no future clicks on it. So now if I click on one of these here, here we go. I'm clicking as many as I can. It ran once, it fired all those events but it will never run again until I rerun the page. So that could be helpful if you have a button. Let's just make ourselves a quick button here and we'll grab it. And you only ever wanted somebody to click that button once. We just say button .add event listener, click. And then when that happens, we'll run a quick function here that just console logs click. Watch this. So we've got this button. If I click it over and over and over and over, we're going to get it. But if I were to add that third options argument here, where we have once is equal to true, I should only be able to click this once and never again. And, and where I've used that specifically is in store checkouts, where you do not wish for someone to click that button more than once. You can unbind it um, and stop them from, from clicking it multiple times. So hopefully you learned a few things there. I know that propagation and bubbling and capturing, all of those words uh, used to be very, very confusing to me. Um, and it's not something you use every day. So it's one of those things where you just sort of put off from learning. So hopefully you spent a couple minutes and just learned exactly what propagation and bubbling and all of that stuff does. Thanks, I'll see you tomorrow.